Hello, welcome to Out to Vintage. My name is Jonathan and today we're going to be talking about fakes. It's a thing that's been kind of a long running issue. It's been a long running issue for decades. There's always somebody mass producing and selling reproductions and fakes of branded items. Back in the 90s, it was Kickers, Tommy, all that kind of stuff. Right now, it's people reproducing vintage items. And by that, I mean Nike sweaters, Adidas equipment, chaps, gap hoodies, especially the brown ones, and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot and lot, a lot of fakes kicking around at the minute. Uh, now, there are a lot of different things we're going to look at. We're going to look at the terms used, the legality of it, the current issue, what we can do about it, and what we can do to kind of sell on our fakes uh, if we need to. Because they do come in from time to time, and obviously we need to kind of do something with them to sell them on. Um, so it's like, you know, we need to kind of look at what we're going to do with it. Because it's not sustainable to throw them away. Yeah, it's more sustainable to make use of the fakes. But what we need to do is make sure we're not buying um, currently made fakes. So the terms, bootleg is the one that people like to throw around. It's a really nice, pretty word. Uh, bootleg comes from uh, the early 1900s during the Prohibition, when in America they banned alcohol. Um, so people started making their own alcohol and the movement of that alcohol, whether it be whiskey or whatever, was called bootlegging. Um, you'd make your own whiskey and you'd bootleg it. It kind of got, in the 70s, kind of got reused uh, by people selling band CDs and band tapes outside concerts. They were bootleg uh, tapes. Basically, they just copied someone's uh, music, recorded the uh, concert, and then were selling the tapes um, afterwards. Then it came t-shirts and CDs, and now people use it for clothing. So it's kind of a bastardized term, uh, but basically it's just another word for fake. Um, you've got inspired by reproduction, a copy of whatever it is. If you are copying a Nike sweater, regardless of whether it's a brand new one or one from 1990, if you are copying that and reproducing it, um, it's fake. It's that simple. Um, and if you're selling it on, you are selling a fake and you can get done for that. It's against all terms, it's against Depop terms, Etsy terms, eBay terms. Um, and if Nike decided to come and uh, crack down on you, they could, one, not only remove the listing, but two, remove the item from you, especially if trading standards get involved. Now, the other thing they can sometimes get classed as is dead stock, where they're trying to pass it off as new old stock. Um, there are people out there who have genuine dead stock. If you look at Callum's cupboard, for example, uh, he has genuine dead stock. And if you look at the dead stock he has, it's generally irregular sizes. Now, when you get dead stock in high volumes, it's because it's in sizes that are irregular. So uh, he recently got 92 pairs of socks, Nike socks, um, from the early 2000s, I think they were. Um, but if you actually look, they were all kid socks because they were ones that couldn't sell at retail. So they've gone into a basically a container of uh, unsold items, which he's then bought and sold on. And as the, what they are, genuine dead stock, kid socks. Um, and if you look at a lot of the rework, uh, not reworked, uh, a lot of the uh, dead stock stuff he gets, it's generally irregular sizes because that's how dead stock would come. If you go to the shop and there's a sale on, say you go to Primark and there's a sale on, you'll generally find it's either the smallest clothes or the biggest clothes, never the premium sizes, never the, you know, the stuff that everyone else wants is like your larges and excels. It's always irregular sizes because that's what ends up dead stock. It's very rare to get the premium stuff dead stock. It's always awkward. Um, and that's the reason why it's dead stock is they couldn't sell it at retail and that's how it's ended up in the place it is. Um, so if you're seeing somebody selling dead stock uh, and it all premium, all premium sizes, there's a fair chance it's not legit. You have to forgive me. I had to write some of this down because there's a lot to cover. Um, so the legality of it, like I was just saying, uh, it is pretty, uh, Clear cut, um, reproducing um, items to look like something else uh, is against the copyright um, of that brand uh, and it's illegal. Uh, trading standards can come down on you with heavy fines. The company can come in and they're legally allowed to, to remove all the stock. They could come in and take everything with their brand on it um, because it's not produced by them and therefore they can take it and destroy it. It's that simple. Um, if you ever go to a lot of car boots, you sometimes you'll see trading standards going around car boots, 
trying to get all the people selling like the fake Nikes and all that kind of stuff. Um, it is an illegal practice and it is something um, that you want to be avoiding, especially if you're a uh, company or a person who wants to be uh, successful at this long term. Now the current issue is sweaters. Um, same as back in the 90s, it's come back around again. Uh, massive reproduction, instead of uh, copying current sweaters, it used to be kickers and uh, Tommy sweaters, uh, you still see people getting cut out now by the 30 year old fakes. There's now people reproducing Adidas equipment, Nike, Gap, Chaps, uh, en masse. I'm gonna show you a video in a second. In fact, I'm gonna step aside here. I'm gonna put the videos here now. These people have actually been going out of their way to contact people on Instagram to sell sweaters and sending these videos. These videos highlight exactly what they're doing. Mass producing uh, fakes, basically. Mass producing fakes, and no, it's not modern fakes, they're reproducing vintage. Um, and people are buying it, selling it on Depop for silly, silly money. Um, we've seen them at pop-ups selling them, um, claiming they're authentic when they're very clearly not. Now, a majority of this is coming from uh, Asia. Um, however, there is like people are reaching out to me to tell me there's people actually in the UK doing this. And there's people reached out and told me that there are people, sellers themselves reproducing this stuff. Um, they've literally got themselves embroidery machines and making it and selling the stuff on as genuine. It's not cool. You're not gonna get very far with that. Yeah, long-term sustainability, it's not good. You're effectively a crook at this point. Um, you're running a business, um, breaking the law. Um, so these companies aren't gonna be around for long. The people running them aren't gonna be successful. So it's something you kind of wanna be aware of. Um, what can we do about it? You can report them to the manufacturer. So if they're reproducing Gap hoodies or Nike hoodies, you can contact Nike and say, I believe this person is selling fakes. Just contact their customer care. Their customer care will escalate it to their compliance team. Their compliance team will look into it and take care of it. Um, same with training standards. Find out what locality there are. Just send an email to their local district um, and training standards will also look into it. Um, it's something that needs to be stomped on because there are a lot of younger people getting into vintage now who don't know any better. And this is the big crux. This is the big thing where you have genuine sellers going out the way to find that one Adidas equipment sweater. Um, they're selling it at a reasonable price, yet these clowns are mass producing fakes. Um, people are getting these fakes and not being happy with the quality, and rightfully so because the quality is shit. Um, and it's just devaluing genuine stuff. Plus it's also confusing the younger ones who are like, that tag's different to my tag. It's like, well, that's because your tag's fake. And then you've got to then sit there and correct and educate somebody because they're being ripped off by someone else. So it's something um, that really does affect everyone. It really does affect everyone. Um, but the other thing to this is, I know Nike are already on, uh, on this. Um, Nike are actually quite concerned about it because obviously it's their intellectual property that's being kind of uh, stolen and reputation has been damaged because people are buying these fake Nikes and they're falling apart because they're obviously cheaply made. Um, and then Nike aren't, you know, getting the shit for it, so they're not happy. Now, what can happen here is like what happened with Etsy back in the mid 2000s. For a brief period, Etsy actually stopped people from selling Burberry because uh, Burberry reached out and said, they're, these are all fake, we don't want you selling um, these. And basically, um, for a while, they were stopped from selling Burberry. So if you had Burberry, you couldn't list it uh, on Etsy because Burberry basically said no. Uh, until they kind of figured out how to correctly authenticate them and they were allowed back on. But um, that is something that can happen. Nike could turn around to Depop and say, um, there's too many fakes on your platform. There's uh, too much of our intellectual property being traded through your platform that isn't ours. It's been basically stolen and you need to remove all of it. And companies have done that in the past. Like I say, they did it with Etsy. And there's a very good chance they'll do it again in the future because like I say, um, these people are really taking the piss. They're not even hiding the fact that these things are fake. Some of them are even listed as fake. Um, and these companies uh, in like Pakistan in particular are literally going out there contacting sellers, sending them videos of the reproductions. Um, 
and just making it blatantly obvious. And it's not gonna be long before Adidas, Gap, Nike, basically go up to uh, selling platforms and just say, look, um, there's too much stuff going through, get rid of it. Um, now, what happens when you get a fake? Now, if you get fakes, it does happen. It happens all the time. We get the odd fake. Uh, the other ones that's heavily faked are the North Face, for example. North Face are very heavily faked. Um, when you see uh, wholesalers abroad um, with hundreds of like black North Face puffers, blue North Face puffers, red North Face puffers, all lined up, they're, they're all fake. Um, you got to remember, these products were premium products. There weren't millions and millions and millions of these premium products sold. Um, especially not millions, millions, millions that you'll be able to get um, so nice and neatly and clean that, you know, that a lot of them would have needed repairs because they're used. Um, so you've got to kind of watch out for that. that. Um, now, when you get fake stuff in, um, it does happen. Personally, um, I just find someone to give it away to. Uh, it's better to give it away and let it be used. Um, but there are ways to basically get around this. Uh, the main thing you can do is rework uh, your fakes. Um, when you take something and rework it, it basically becomes your intellectual property at that point. As long as you're not making it look like something else, so you're not copying, I can say you get a Nike sweater and you're not copying a Nike crop top, uh, you're making your own thing, um, tie dyeing it, chopping it up, turning it into something else, whether it be a tote bag, uh, I don't know, a halter, a halter neck thing, whatever it is you want to turn it into, as long as you turn it into your own unique thing, um, and basically it's not a copy at that point, it's a, a rework. Um, and as long as you don't sell it as a Nike, as a Nike branded rework, and you sell it as a rework sweater or whatever, um, you're kind of in a bit of a loophole gray area where you're not selling a fake anymore. Um, you're selling a rework, and you've, as long as it's worded correctly, you're fine. Um, legally, like Depop might still have an issue with it. Depop might come in and say, that was a fake sweater, um, and they may ask you to remove it, or may just remove it for you. Um, but legally, you're fine. Um, I spoke to a, um, a patent, well, not patent lawyer, uh, consumer goods uh, lawyer. There's a couple of them floating around on Instagram. And while it is kind of murky, especially around fakes, reworking them um, basically makes it your intellectual property and then you're allowed to sell it on. As long as you're not selling it as an official Nike product, um, you're fine. And that's a good way to kind of rework the vintage and get it sold. Uh, so yeah, um, don't go out your way to abuse anybody, obviously. Um, if you do know somebody that's selling fakes, don't reach out to them they're not going to care what your opinion is uh just report them obviously if it's just somebody with one reworked like one fake sweater maybe they bought it and they're reselling it and they don't know any better um you can reach out and let them know but honestly you're just going to be met with uh they're going you're going to get the backup they're not going to be happy to hear from you um just report the item and move on it's it's a sad thing but sadly they're being screwed over they may have bought it knowing full well but they're not allowed to sell it. Um, and like I say, it damages the whole industry and it won't take much for like a company like Adidas to say, you're selling far too many fake Adidas uh, on your platform. We don't want you selling our, our, uh, our product on there at all. And then Adidas as a whole brand will be pulled from the platform. And like I say, it has happened. They do get them back, but it takes time, just like uh, Etsy had with Burberry really early on. Uh, I know by the way because i had burberry listed and i was there when it got pulled um so there you go i kind of rambled on a bit so thank you very much for watching um if you like it share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll catch you next time